Hi there, my name's Kirsty Scully and I'm a Certified Financial Planner in Cape Town. I want to talk to you today about the importance of financial independence for women. I have my own story. I was unfortunately widowed as a very young 28 year old. I was pregnant with our first child when my husband died in an aircraft accident. And at that stage I realised the absolute importance of being financially independent. It's such a sad fact that so many women fall into that similar situation by being single, either through divorce or perhaps through death, or even just in our difficult economic times, that you find yourself in a situation where you are the breadwinner. It is important that you take control of your finances. It is important that you look after your finances in a way that you can run the finances of your family. This will help you to achieve the goals that your family needs to achieve from a financial perspective. And you know what? It will also give you such enormous self-confidence to know that you are financially independent. And I'd really like to encourage you to do that. So it's important that you take responsibility for your finances and there are various ways that we can do this to help you to achieve that financial independence. So of course the big question is how can I become financially independent? And there are four points that I'd like to leave with you today. So the first point is I'd like you to be able to understand your finances. Now when I talk about understanding your finances, what do I mean? I want you to understand what comes into your bank account and then what it is that actually goes out your bank account. So many people don't even realize all the ins and the outs and what every expense actually is. The second point today is I'd like you to be able to understand your retirement savings. Now this is where it's important that you meet with a financial planner because a financial planner is going to be able to help you to work out how much should you be saving in order to achieve your long-term goals. Now, when I say that, what we do is we have a look at what are your expenses at the moment. And there will be certain expenses that you won't have during re retirement, but we want to be able to keep you on the same standard of living as what you are now. We're not trying to make you hugely wealthy, but we don't want you to retire with less than what you presently have. So it is important and also a financial plan will help you if for example when you leave jobs, when you move from one job to another, to ensure that you preserve that money, that retirement money and that you don't just go and spend it on anything. And a lot of people think, oh well you know what, maybe I'd like to pay off my home loan when I leave a company. No. That money is specifically for retirement and I want to encourage you if you do move from one job to another, Keep that money for your retirement. The third point today is understand your debt. I often say to people, debt steals from us. It steals our future and we need to get rid of our debt as soon as possible. If you owe money to anybody, it could be your husband, it could be your partner, it could be a friend, your mother-in-law, or it could even be the bank. You are indebted to that person. And that person technically is tying you down, tying you down from a perspective of you can't just spend your money where you like. And that's why it is important to understand your debt. You need to understand is it long-term debt or is it short-term debt? How much is still outstanding? What is the interest rate? And then draw up a list of all your debt. Once you've drawn up that list, and I would suggest with the list, you need to write down who you owe, what the amount is and what the interest rate is. Then put it in the order of the top debt would be the one with the highest interest rate. And then you start paying off. So all the, all the different debts pay off what is your effectively what the minimum amount is that you need to pay. But the one with the highest debt I'd like you to pay off as much as possible and add as much money as you can possibly add to pay that off. And let's get that highest interest rate debt paid off fully. Now, once that number one debt is paid off, you take all that money that you were paying into number one and you put it into the second highest interest rate debt. 
and you go and you pay it off with with the amount that you were paying in there as well as with all this extra money you pay it off and hopefully that will be able to be done fairly quickly once that's paid off you go to debt number three and so on until you have fully paid it off so you, if you understand we're starting with the highest debt we're going down to the lowest debt and that is the best way of actually getting rid of the debt but at the same time what is most important don't get yourself back into the same situation stop using the credit card now when I say stop using the credit card let me explain a little bit there we live in a society that it's not safe to carry cash so by all means use a credit card to pay for things but at the very beginning of the month you need to put into your credit card the money that you plan to spend on it so in fact you're actually using your own money you're not using the bank's money and use your credit card that way so it is at least a safe way of transacting but don't start using the bank's money and by doing this you're going to be able to get rid of debt and ensure that you don't get yourself back into that same habit of credit cards of store accounts of online store accounts change your habits from here on the fourth point for us today is that you need to understand your goals what are your goals? What are your savings goals? What is it that you would like to achieve in life? Once you have started saving sufficiently for your retirement and you've paid off your debt, it is important then to start saying, what are my goals? What do I really want to achieve? Maybe you want to ensure that you've got sufficient money for your children to have tertiary education. Maybe it's an overseas trip that you're planning for you or for the family. But whatever the goal is, sit down with a financial planner who will be able to say, right, based on that amount that you need to save, you would need to save X amount on a monthly basis. And your financial planner will be able to ensure that your money is invested suitably for the length of time at the correct risk for the particular goal that it is that you're trying to achieve. So if we just recap for today, there are four things. We need to understand our finances. In other words, understanding what goes in and out of our accounts. We need to understand our retirement savings and how much we need to be saving for retirement. We need to understand our debt and how do we get it paid off as quickly as possible. And lastly, we need to understand what our goals are. So clearly from what I've been talking about today, it is important that you meet with a financial planner because a financial planner will be able to guide you in whatever situation it is. Now, often people say, well, when is actually the best time to meet with a financial planner? The gut feel in me says, now, no better time than right now. However, there are certain times in your life where it is definitely more important. The first time I would say is, once you finish studying and you are now starting your career, definitely meet with one then so that you can get saving at least for your retirement and get that on, well on the way. Another time to meet with your financial planner is perhaps if there's been a change in your career, if you're moving from one job to another. Another time would be in the event of perhaps losing your spouse. Maybe he or she passes away and you need to make changes in your finances. And then another time would be if you are to be fortunate to inherit some money, definitely a good time to meet with a financial planner. And lastly, if you're starting your own business, please do yourself a favor and meet with a financial planner so that you can ensure that all your ducks are in a row to ensure that you get that financial independence, which we all need. People often say to me, how do affluent people manage their money that makes such a difference to them? Over the years, I've watched affluent people and seen what they've done. And I've come across six points that I have been particularly aware of. The first point is they start early. They start saving, for example, for retirement from their first jobs before the age of 25. And that makes a difference. Affluent people generally save for at least 33 years, whilst most other people tend to save for only about 23 years on average. The second point is that they save as much as possible. 
And here, what we see, especially when it comes to retirement savings, is that they save at least 15% of their income for retirement. But here's the catch from the age of 25. So if you've missed the age of 25, it needs to be higher than 15%. Whereas the average person tends to only save about 7%. The third point is that they don't rely only on their company pension funds or company provident funds for their retirement. They also have a retirement annuity. In fact, about 37% of affluent people have a retirement annuity as well as their company retirement funds and that makes a huge difference to their retirement savings. The fourth point is when they leave jobs, when they go from one job to another, they generally don't spend their money. In fact, 12% of affluent people have tended to spend their money, but the rest have actually literally preserved their retirement fund from one company to the next, and that has made a huge difference. And then the fifth point is that they widen their nets. It's been seen that about 98% of affluent people, in fact, have income from an additional source. And that is in comparison to around about 68% of other people. So that has made quite a big difference. And then last but certainly not least, the sixth reason, is that they use financial professionals to help them with their finances. And we've seen that, that 88% of affluent people have used financial planners from very early on in, in their age, right through to retirement, to ensure that their investments are managed most appropriately, and that is how they become affluent. I really trust that the information I've given to you today is there to encourage you and I hope that it has encouraged you because it is so important that as women we are financially independent. We need to empower ourselves with our finances and I do hope that you can put some of those points into action.